Have you ever heard the term of under promise and over deliver? Well, apparently Tesla hasn't. If you've been a Tesla fan, or really if you've just heard of Tesla at all, you'll know they're known for one thing. And no, it's not really making electric cars, while they are known for that. It's known for over-promising and under-delivering. Seven years ago, back in 2017, Elon Musk announced the Tesla Roadster. This was going to be Tesla's all-American, all-electric supercar. This was going to be a 1,000 horsepower, all-wheel drive, fully electric supercar that could go zero to 60 in 1.9 seconds and have a top speed of 250 miles per hour. Not only that, it had a 650 mile range, which at the time, even today, that is a lot for an electric car. As a car enthusiast, I was actually very intrigued. As much as I love gas cars, 250 miles per hour with a 1.9 second acceleration is pretty insane. Elon Musk announced this and basically said that these would be had for around $250,000 for the first thousand of them, which would be the founder editions. And then after that, they would be starting at $200,000 and could be optioned up from there. Originally, these were stated to release sometime shortly after 2017 and really closer to 2021 is when Elon Musk said that you could actually get one of these things. However, it's 2024 and so far we haven't seen them at all. Today, however, it is 2024. We are way past the delivery year of 2021. Notice I didn't say delivery day, delivery year. It has been three years since these were supposed to start being delivered. In fact, you were able to put down $50,000 back in 2017 as a deposit on one of these vehicles that would eventually cost you $250,000 total. They had around 1,000 people put down deposits on these vehicles back in 2017. That means Tesla made $50 million from these deposits back in 2017, only to produce zero so far. This isn't very uncommon of Elon Musk and Tesla. Elon Musk loves to use the idea of the future and future products to help generate revenue in their upcoming development stages. For example, in that same time, the Tesla Semi was also revealed and there are some on the road, but not many. And we really haven't heard anything about them since. Similar things have happened where Elon Musk has promised either a price, a delivery day, or features that no one really ever got. So it's not really unusual that the Tesla Roadster hasn't even really been talked about since. Now apparently they are supposed to start delivery here sometime soon, but they've been saying that for the past seven years or so, so who knows, maybe we have another seven years to go before we see the first Tesla Roadster on the road. So let's do some quick math real quick. Let's say there are two people, Jack and Jill. Jack decided he wanted a Tesla Roadster, and so he put down $50,000 to get a Tesla Roadster. This was made in 2017, and it was a deposit that was just put into basically the purchase price of a Roadster. Jill, however, decided to buy 212 shares of SPY, which is a ETF on the stock market. She basically spent about $50,000 at $235 a share, to get about 212 shares. The price per share today of filming this video is $579 per share, which basically means today in 2024, Jack is still out his $50,000 and still has no Tesla Roadster, and Jill's stock is now worth about $123 thousand dollars just because you put a deposit down on a vehicle that you still haven't received in over seven years you have lost out on the chance to almost triple your money in the stock market or other investments that might have been even more lucrative that doesn't even factor in inflation or any other sort of losses that you have basically just given to elon because of these deposits on a vehicle that you still haven't seen or heard anything of in the past who knows how long. I'm glad I didn't do that. That's not, uh, that's not great. Now, I understand that a lot of people are probably really mad at me right now and they're typing in the comments saying, well, they wouldn't know that the stock market would go up. Uh, they, whatever the reasons would be that they're trying to defend this right now. And it's really kind of hard to defend this. No matter which way you look at it, even if you had just sat on $50,000, the interest just sitting in the bank alone would have made you money. Even if you didn't put it in the bank, if it was $50,000 sitting underneath your mattress, at least you still have your $50,000 to spend because 
if you've given it to Elon Musk and Tesla, basically you can't spend it and you still don't have your super fast Tesla Roadster. For me, this was a learning experience basically to not give my money to anyone as a deposit. The only reason why you would want to do a deposit on the vehicle is if it was one, a limited or super rare vehicle, such as a Koenigsegg, a Pagani, or some other big car company. The only other reason, which isn't as good of a reason, is basically you just want to be the first one. You want to have the first thing that they've made so you look cool or that you get to experience it first, I guess. And that to me isn't really a smart decision at all. It'll still be there even as a YouTuber, there is some desire to have something first because then you can make exclusive videos and basically make more money than everybody else does at first. But even for me as a business decision, I can still make very close to the same amount of money by making just different content with a vehicle. So it's very hard to justify the fact that you spent $50,000 with the opportunity to make more money to get something before everybody else does. I don't really see these things as investment level vehicles either. Elon Musk is probably going to produce as many of them as he possibly can once he gets the production line set up for it to reduce his overall costs and amortize that vehicle production. Pair that with the history of electric cars not lasting very long and basically not really restorable once they go out, it doesn't really seem like a great investment to me. In fact, the early model roadsters haven't really held value much at all and it's mainly because of the maintenance on them. No one can service these cars and they're starting to have batteries and motors wear out. And since they are so old, Tesla is focusing on the future, not the past. They'd rather you just buy a brand new car or put a deposit down on a new Roadster rather than fix your cheap old early model Roadster that no one really cares about anymore. Now let's say that Elon Musk does actually start to deliver on his promise and allows people to start taking deliveries of these $200,000, $250,000 Tesla Roadsters. Well, then there falls another problem. It's been a while since 2017 and cars have come a long way, especially gas cars. For $200,000 to $250,000, you can buy a very nice vehicle. For example, you can buy a brand new Porsche GT3, Turbo, Turbo S, and those cars are blisteringly fast. Not only that, you get a super high level of luxury from a brand that has a history in motorsports and just in the automotive world in general. Now, since the Roadster doesn't really exist yet, it's hard to compare cars to it. So I'm gonna pick its closest relative, the Tesla Plaid. The Tesla Plaid is basically a Model S or Model X that has been souped up to have an insane amount of power and acceleration that is going to be similar or really as close as we can get to the Roadster. The biggest difference is going to be the body of the vehicle. So the Tesla Model S Plaid has a Nuremberg ring time of seven minutes, 35 seconds. Nuremberg is a very long track and is typically used to gauge the performance of a vehicle over a wide variety of turns and instances where that a car might face. Tesla has bragged heavily about what their cars can do in a straight line, but they really don't show much about what they can do over the course of a racetrack. However, the Tesla Model S Plaid did set a pretty good performance number of seven minutes, 35 seconds around the Nuremberg ring. This compares similar to other sedans like the BMW M5 or the Audi RS3. Where Tesla really lacked here was in the corners. On the straights, they did insane numbers, but during the corners, since the car is so heavy, it did lose quite a bit of time that it could have made up in. Now let's say even the Roadster is quite lighter than the Plaid. It's still going to lose time in these corners because of how much that battery pack weighs. And I think that might be one of the things that's really holding Elon Musk back from producing this vehicle is it doesn't really compete. I'm guessing while it has some amazing straight line time speeds, the corners just don't make up for the price. Along with that, when you are pushing the car hard, that 650 mile range quickly dwindles down probably into the 200s, maybe even the 100s, which for a performance car, that's not really something that you want, especially with how long these things take to charge. Earlier, I said that you could get a Porsche GT3 for a similar price, which is true. A Porsche GT3 comes in around $243,000, which is actually cheaper than that $250,000 mark that Tesla was advertising for the first thousand 
Tesla Roadsters. And the Porsche GT3 has a lap time of seven minutes, 12 seconds around the Nuremberg ring, which every second is substantial difference when it comes to lap times, especially on the Nuremberg ring. Now, Elon Musk has said that he is confident that the Roadster will beat even the highest level street car on the Nuremberg ring in terms of lap time, which for me, I have a really hard time believing because that car is the AMG One. If you don't know what the Mercedes AMG One is, it is Mercedes hypercar, and it currently holds the Nuremberg lap time record of six minutes and 29 seconds. That is almost a full minute faster than the Tesla Model S Plaid. So it has me having a really hard time believing that this $250,000 Tesla Roadster can compete with this absolute beast that Mercedes has produced that other car manufacturers are even scared to go up against. And I think it's because of some of those claims that Elon Musk has made that he doesn't really want to release the Roadster. He wants to fulfill that promise of making it the fastest car that you can get for the price, but he's been falling short in their tests. Now that with probably some other logistical factors has been the reason why these cars really haven't been produced, but that's just my personal opinion that is probably a big factor in Elon Musk saying, I don't wanna release this thing when it really can't compete for the price or the performance. Not only that, there's been no mention of carbon ceramic brakes or any other performance options other than just straight line speed for this vehicle. For example, the Tesla Model S Plaid has had some serious issues with their braking. It's so fast, that it doesn't really have great stopping power with its standard steel brakes, especially with how heavy it is. There's been calls for Tesla to install carbon ceramic brakes, and they just haven't had the opportunity to do it, or they just don't care to do it. So I have a feeling that that's probably not going to be an option, which really should be a priority on the Tesla Roadster. Personally, if it were me and I was going to drop $250,000 on a vehicle, I would look at either a used Ferrari or Lamborghini or a brand new Porsche that is going to be way more fun and have a soul, whereas this Roadster just frankly won't. I will give Elon Musk some credit here. At least he is still trying to tailor to the enthusiast that you can have a high performance electric car and that they aren't all just boring pieces of garbage. However, I really can't give him credit in the fact that we still haven't seen one in over seven years. My message to Elon and my message to all you Tesla fanboys out there is I want to give you guys a chance. I think that these cars could be something that is really cool, but so far I just haven't seen it. And I haven't seen it from really any electric car company, especially at an affordable price for the average everyday Joe to enjoy. Until then, I'm gonna be sticking with my fun gas cars that I can get for 10 to $50,000 and have a absolute blast in. However, I wanna hear what you guys think. If you guys are on the wait list for Roadster, I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts and how you guys are feeling. If you're not already, be sure to subscribe down below so you don't miss any of the videos I put out in the near future. With that said, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.